Welcome to Life Beyond Tax. Today we have with us an IRS achiever who marches to the beat of her own drama. She has effectively combined her duties as an IRS officer with her passion for art and literature. She is a consummate artist. She is a painter, a poet, a writer of short stories in Hindi and a filmmaker too. She has also dabbled in calligraphy and sculptures and even runs her own NGO Prithvi. She is Ms. Sangeeta Gupta, Principal Commissioner of Income Tax in Jammu and Kashmir from the 1984 IRS batch. Born in 1958 in Gorakhpur, UP, she is a science graduate with a Masters in Political Science and a degree in Law before she went on to become an integral part of the Department of Revenue, even winning a gold medal for the best probationer. While responsible for implementing tax laws, she is equally committed to her passion for art. She paints abstracts in oils and acrylics on canvas. She has a collection of published works, including short stories and six anthologies of poems in Hindi, which have been translated into several languages. She has even scripted and directed seven documentary films, three of which were on the life of Mr. Keshav Malik, a noted poet and art critic. She has held more than 28 solo exhibitions of her paintings in India and overseas in London, Lahore, Munich and Berlin. She has even participated in more than 150 group art shows. She has received awards for her drawing and painting besides several achievement awards for her work in art and literature including the Hind Prabha Award, the Poet of the Year Award and even a Women Achievers Award from the Indian Council for UN Relations. Let's meet Ms. Sangeeta Gupta, Principal Commissioner of Income Tax in Jammu and Kashmir and artist. Ms. Gupta, welcome to Life Beyond Tax. My, my pleasure to be with you. Uh, Ms. Gupta, you have, been, uh, you have studied science, you have studied law. You are in Jammu and Kashmir implementing tax laws. When did you uh, truly discover your love for painting, art and literature? Actually, I come from a family where everybody was interested in literature, reading, music. So it came uh, very naturally to me. My parents believed that education comes from what you read, what you try to understand. And my father always told me that, you know, a kind of discipline, self-discipline is required, which you don't understand as a child. But gradually, you know, when you lose your parents, then all what they have said comes back to you in a flash and then uh, your love for art and literature found its expression after you joined uh, the Revenue Service. I started writing uh, poetry around the age of 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. Very influenced by Bengali literature. Somehow, Ravindar Tagore uh, really took me by storm and I really loved Gitanjali. I was very fond of reading Mahadevi Verma, Nirala, Jashankar Prasad. So all these mystic poets, mm -hmm. Rehse Kavi, these really influenced my thought process. So now I realize that my love for poetry was always there mm -hmm. and I used to scribble but uh, gradually my poems became more mature with age mm -hmm. and while I was my, I'm in my first posting around 86, 87, mm -hmm. I met Mahadevi Verma and I gave her my manuscript of poems. But in few days time she called me and she said, you are a poet, you are and never give up on your poetry. You oh, will yeah. get married, you will have children, you will have no time with job but poetry is your core competence. Whenever I am not in touch with poetry or I have not written for long then still I feel that it will come back to me. Sure. Then you turn to your art, painting. Uh, these are all complementary uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, they they complement each other. Poetry is very close to painting. Uh, poetry is a painting by words and painting is... Uh, without words you are uh, expressing yourself all forms of art even reading I feel is very important but reading is a little passive whereas mm. uh, art painting yeah, yeah. writing so it's, the, it's, the it's a more step, active step. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
form. But if you do not read a lot, you cannot write good. Sure. Reading is intrinsic part of a writer's or poet's life. Mm -hmm. Which is your uh, favorite mode of expression? You know, when I when I am in a phase of writing poems, I write poems. And when I am in a phase of painting, then mostly I am these days in last so, so many years, I am more into painting. And as and when the poetry doesn't come easy to a human being, you have to have that kind of mental space. Mm -hmm. How would you define this mental space? Mental space, if you are thinking of all the time about mental uh, mundane things that I have to to do this, that or too many things are pressurizing mm -hmm. your brain, then that mental space is not there. Then you have to find that space. Then only creativity comes to you. Okay. And uh, does your uh, creative life uh, interfere with your duties as Not uh, at all. I consider myself a better officer in the sense that I'm more sensitive to people and what, who, if, whether administering tax or administering my uh, subordinates, it's the same. You have to have that kind of compassion and sensitivity towards people. But if you are in the middle of a painting and your heart is absolutely taken up by that painting, your every living moment is taken up by the painting, then mm. doesn't that clash with your uh, No, I, when I'm painting, I'm 100% uh, with that painting. My, I am a very regimented and self-disciplined person. When I am in office, then uh, I don't think about painting. I always consider that pa being a painter and a poet makes you a better human being and also a better administrator because then you have that kind of basic intrinsic So you compassion. carry the gentleness into your uh, work as of well? Of course. and But at the, uh, at the same time, I can be very tough with my subordinates or with people when uh, the what I have to deliver, I have to deliver. What were your challenges uh, in implementing uh, tax laws in people Jammu are, uh, in Especially in the valley, people are not uh, tax compliant. They don't want to file their return. They don't want to pay taxes because the militants and other people have always tutored them that you don't pay anything to the government of India because they are not uh, your people. So uh, the challenges are very big. But I thought that uh, let me convince them and I said that you people are special, you are governed by Article 370 and let me give you the example of Maharashtra where I collect 100 rupees and spend only 60 rupees on Maharashtra. But when I collect 100 rupees from JNK, I spend 125 rupees. So every penny you pay, it will come back much more than what you have. Yeah. And till you pay, no infrastructure can develop. You have taken the stance of uh, convincing rather than uh, yes, issuing demand I, notices. I have been telling people that the whole mindset about civil services should change. People sure. should also believe that civil servants are there to give them ease, comfort and better way of life. Okay, and what are the changes you have brought about in tax collection in Jammu? I realize that in Jammu and Kashmir, 13 and a half lakh people have PAN cards, the PAN card holders, but only 84,000 SSCs are there. But the, the widest gap which I have seen in any state is Jammu and Kashmir. And the effective SSCs who are regular taxpayers and filing returns are only 66,900. And I was given a target of adding new SSCs to the tune of 75,000. Uh -huh. And that day I, I was shaken. I said, my God, how do I go about it? Yeah. But I said, let me start. And with Divine Grace, today we have added 90,000 new SSCs. Wow. So, which is... You have a, exceeded your targets. I have exceeded my target. The most amazing part is in the Kashmir Valley, only 6,000 odd people were filing their regular returns. Now we have added 23,000. And because Kashmir Valley is Kashmir Valley, mm -hmm. so 23,000 addition of new SSCs, uh, it gives me immense satisfaction. And uh, uh, do you find the job a little more difficult uh, being a woman? Not at all. Gender has nothing to do with my job. Mm -hmm. I have never, you know, when I work, uh, all the people, you know, by it is only a peculiar state that I don't have any woman working under me. I have no subordinate who is a woman. And it doesn't bother me at all. Initially, you know, in the initial stages when you work, when you join as an assistant commissioner, maybe some people think that, the, oh, this is a woman, how, how she's going to tackle all this accounts and maths and uh, 
is a very technical subject taxation yeah, is very yeah, technical sure. out of all branches of law taxation is the most, most technical, technical yeah. so i proved myself in the academy itself when i went there i was a student of political science deeply interested in poetry and literature but you know income tax act to tha to it was beyond me mujhe to uski english na samajh mein aaya not with standing se to apka wo act hi start hota hai all most of the sections are so complicated do i will never you know be able to clear my departmental exam and i didn't know debit and credit i was never a student of commerce and my expression in the class was so blank that my course director was beyond you you are going to be a perpetual probationer you know i i took it so bad it really broke my heart i said i am going to prove this man wrong and ultimately after 18 months i was the topper of my batch i got not only for uh, academics i also got the best probationer award for everything you got a gold medal for yeah. being the best probationer yeah. it is not best probationer is not only about academics about overall personality uh, can you recall for us some memorable uh, incidents uh, in the department of revenue i have worked uh, as a investigating officer and conducted many searches on my own mm-hmm. the only beautiful thing which i decided to do is that i would not collect information from informers because they sometimes double cross you and also uh, you know i thought that i'll take it upon myself to build up my own cases so it was very exciting very challenging and most of my cases turn out better i con- conducted searches against such people who were very very criminal and my department would have never thought to do a search on that so i did a search with, which was in the howrah scrap iron market mm-hmm. the, which is the biggest in asia railway se contracts and all that so one mafia don i searched i knew that he has killed many people but i thought that if police is not able to handle this man let me do it and it became a very big success mm-hmm. but for me calcutta was the golden period then again jammu is supposed to be a mm. hardship posting yeah. i am enjoying my tenure i have opened three new offices i have opened office in katra in vijaypur samba and in baramulla which was a very big task in last 8 years nobody had ah. opened any new office okay in last 8 7 8 months i have opened three new offices maybe because i am so enriched by poetry and uh, art mm-hmm. uh, that it gives me additional energy to do all this so when do you find the time to paint or write oh after 6 o'clock most of the time after 6 6:37 i am on my own mm-hmm. till uh, the next morning it is your choice you want to watch tv gossip mm-hmm. go partying mm-hmm. or paint okay <laughs> you must know what brings you happiness sure and that's where you find your joy yeah everybody has to find that mm-hmm. what makes you more happy so sure and uh, uh uh do you how long does it take you to do a painting to complete a painting it, nobody knows even i don't know how much time i'm going to take to complete that painting mm-hmm. i mostly uh, work in my studio uh, maybe 8 hours 10 hours 12 hours on a saturday sunday maybe i don't even venture out of my house okay. on a weekend so on a regular working day how many hours uh, can you uh, devote to painting Two, two hours, three hours, not more than that. Do you think your paintings uh, reflect your spiritual journey? Yes, of course. You know, you will whether you want or you don't want, you will only paint what is there in your subconscious mind. Does your work uh, come into your paintings? In my painting, people say, "So there is lot of precision." Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah. because I have a very clear mind. Mm-hmm. There is. I'm, I have an analytical mind because I studied science. Then you do law, all these subjects, and day in and day out, you are looking towards figures. Yeah. So that precision would be there ah, okay. in your subconscious mind. All right. Do you think it's uh, uh, difficult to sort of come together as far as your creative pursuits are concerned and your precise uh, analytical uh, training in your work is concerned? No, because. being an artist and a poet i'm uh, uh, i always like to innovate my work mm-hmm. you can be more creative dealing with taxation when i write a order when i used to write a assessment order uh-huh. it should be very it should have free flow and uh, it helps you uh, it has never hampered my work 
because both these your duties uh, as an IRS officer and your creative pursuits they are as diverse as chalk and cheese no so i how don't do you agree. i don't agree dressing up is art mm -hmm. when you go to your kitchen and you uh, put you make some food it is again creativity mm -hmm. when you lay the table uh, nicely and your salad is uh, dressed and everything it is again creativity everything is creativity Sure. We have come but uh, made a compartments that only poetry is creativity. Everything, right. the way of living is creativity. So uh, you bring in the precision from your work into your paintings, and mm. the creativity of your paintings into your orders. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Uh, after all, I am one human being. Uh, I cannot com make a compartment that this is the poet, this is the artist, this is mm -hmm. the filmmaker, or this is the. Tax administrator, right. there cannot be compartments. You are a composite person. Absolutely. Has your family life suffered? Not at all. My son is a very evolved person and he is a very well behaved person. When I see the teenagers uh, in JNU or otherwise, mm -hmm. I feel that I am blessed to have a son like him. Mm -hmm. He is my pillar of strength. And what are you working on currently? I am working on a new series of paintings. Mm -hmm. so my new series is called Where Silence is a Poem. I went to Ladakh very mm -hmm. recently in October and then when I came back, my color palette changed on its own. No more subdued colors because Ladakh is like that. Yeah. It has a desert, it has snow, it has... It's a very enlightening mm -hmm. state. It is an awakened place uh -huh. that you cannot die as a creative person without seeing Leia Ladakh. It has a right. different experience altogether. So, uh, is this a work where you bring in your poetry, silence, into your paintings? Or you are this putting together? Ke, this sentence, ke, I was uh, to uh, send a paint, new painting to somebody. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the what should be the title. And then I realized, you know, there's so much silence and it is so comfortable. There's so much tranquil in this work. So, yeah. I named it as Where Silence is a Poem. You know, if you're not comfortable with silence, there's so much noise happening outside and inside mm -hmm. in your, your in your thought process. So it is always very important to seek silence. And uh, do you have a spiritual guide who moves yes, you yes, along? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, around 1995, I met my spiritual guru. Though being a Hindu, I always thought that uh, the Hindus, they have that sanskar and they don't need gurus. I had a Danish friend and she had a guru in Calcutta and she said, mm -hmm. come and meet him. So I said, you need that kind, you have come from a Western culture. One day I asked her that, please take me to your guru, I want to meet him. Mm -hmm. In that moment I met him, I realized that I know him and he also said so. So how me. has your art changed over the years? It has changed uh, completely. If you see my works, which I did in 91, 92, 93, mm -hmm. 94, 95, totally different. Till 97, I would say till 98, then gradually I, I evolved to be a abstract painter. You are also working uh, as an NGO and uh, charitable I started a work. society. I always feel that uh, uh, to the society. Mm -hmm. So, uh, wherever you are, you have to contribute something. And I started an NGO to promote uh, people who are struggling with art and uh, how much comment can do. Mm -hmm. So my uh, paintings has given me the opportunity to be of some help to the society. Now you are also working with the government of Uttarakhand. Yeah, the, what has happened is in 2013 when this Uttarakhand tragedy happened, so my heart went to them, to do something for them. Then I did an exhibition and, and I said that all sale proceeds of this will go to Uttarakhand. Then we thought that if we make small houses or give some money to somebody, it is of no help in the long term. So I, I being a taxation person, I said, let me create a fund. Mm -hmm. So we could raise 20 lakhs. I gave it to Uttarakhand government. I made a constitution. I said, make it a fund, fine mm -hmm. art education fund. Okay. And uh, then it was made and subsequently with lot of pestering to the government, mm -hmm. I also got a matching fund. So now we have a corpus of 40 lakhs and uh, in two years time we have been generating some interest out of that corpus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and from that interest we are going to support students. We have selected some 25 students from uh, Almora, Gadwal and Kumar University. Mm -hmm. 
they are all undergraduates between the age group of 18 to 22 Definitely. who are studying fine arts and we will all right studying fine arts in uttarakhand or even uh, they can the student should be or the artist should dedicated. be from uttarakhand a native otherwise he can study anywhere that freedom is his all right and uh, in your new work how many uh, paintings uh, are you planning i to i don't know i would be doing some 20 25 paintings i've just started so i'm also writing a book on kishor malik he's a great poet he's no more he has been my mentor you have made also made uh, three documentaries, documentaries on him. On him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as a tribute to when, while he was alive, my film was made. Uh -huh. I, I wanted to document what he was saying. It mm -hmm. was very important for the art world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I made another film on and him. And what charmed you about Mr. Malik's life? Oh, Mr. Malik was like a, a mistake. I met him uh, in 98 mm -hmm. uh, while I was looking for somebody to inaugurate my exhibition in I mm -hmm. IFX Delhi. And somebody said that oh, he is the man who would do it and he is in the gallery, go and talk to him. So I went to the gallery, I saw a very tall man, very handsome, good looking 75 year old man. Mm -hmm. so I went and said, Kishore, I need to talk to you about my inauguration of the exhibition. So he said, this is too much noise, let's go out and talk. And I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, he said, uh, uh, we started talking about literature, painting and all. And I talked to him for almost one hour without realizing people don't even utter a word in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, okay, I'll inaugurate your show. I'll also help you to curate the show. Uh -huh. so we, we became great, great friends. He called me a friend, but I always considered him as a, a friend, philosopher, guide and a mentor. Mm -hmm. So... Kishore really shaped me to become an abstract painter. I have a very long association with him of 18 years. Wow. And the graph, he, that was one relationship where the graph never went down. Mm -hmm. It went up, up and up. We did a book together with uh -huh. my paintings and his poems. Oh. We did a, an exhibition with his poems and my paintings. Then uh, he translated my poems in English. Oh. So very creative uh, relationship. Uh -huh. and then I made three films on him and I'm writing a book on him. So Only what two. do you prioritize? Your new set of paintings or? Uh, it will work simultaneously. Okay. If I want to paint, I'll paint. I, the, but now I want to prioritize. I want to finish this book. Miss Gupta, we wish you all the very best in all your ventures. And it's been lovely speaking with you. Lovely speaking to you too. And you know, uh, sometimes people bring out the best in you. You have been able to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.